Welcome to What's Up Wednesday with My Virtual Academy. I am Jennifer Nickel, the Director of Education for My Virtual Academy. You may remember me from last week. I was on with Mrs. Renee, Re Renee, Renee Weaver Wright. Today we have our president, Mr. Howard Weaver. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you. So one of our first um, kind of questions that I wanted to ask is, what is virtual learning to you? Okay, virtual learning takes on a, a lot of different looks and such. And if, if we look back, the history of virtual learning is uh, being delivered at a distance. And uh, <clears throat> in the beginning, they used... Uh, Oh, radio waves and towers and such to deliver education from one location to another. Many high schools were involved in that, but it was a very expensive process. The advent of the computer probably brought uh, more opportunities for virtual learning because it was less costly. It could be over the telephone lines to begin with, and now, of course, over the internet, which really brings in things into focus and such. And so I think for our conversation today, we'll probably talk about the internet uh, virtual learning that we are very involved with and such. And, and, but again, we've, we've kind of been involved in uh, the virtual learning aspect, distance learning, for close to 30 years now. Yep. Yeah, now with the internet, there's unlimited possibilities, really. Um, so you said that you started it um, for about 30, year, 30 or so years. How did you begin the virtual school? Okay. Well, what uh, we, we really did in the early days, uh, uh, we had worked with a company, it was called Control Data, which no longer exists. They were a large computer company, and the owner of, um, of Control Data was an education freak. He wanted to develop programs, how to help the student who was a slow learner, a student who maybe was having difficulty in a group setting and such, and he expended a lot of money and developed a program where uh, it was computerized, mm -hmm. where students could become tutored by the use of a computer. And that was really the start. Yeah. But it was, you had to go there. It wasn't virtual. And of course, as computers became smaller uh, and the uh, telephone lines were able to take and uh, transport the information, uh, it became much more uh, easy to, uh, to connect with the people who needed it and such. Exactly. Yeah. Um, why do you feel that it is important for students to have options in their, for their education? Well, I think it's uh, very important for students so they can reach their potential. Mm -hmm. You know, every student uh, in Michigan deserves a high school diploma. And many people, because of where they live, because of their uh, economic situation, sometimes their social situation, sometimes uh, illness and things like this, prohibits them from being involved in the traditional school setting. Probably the, the best, uh, uh, and we've always felt, really the best situation is where com partly computerized and partly with the person being mm -hmm. present. But we found out in doing this in the past that we had these pockets of students who uh, pregnant teens. Uh, we took and uh, found out that there are people who can't be in a crowd, there are people with illnesses and such, and so that meets the needs of that student. Also for the student who is a um, person who maybe is advanced, yep. they can do so much more because mm -hmm. a computer is uh, patient, it allows them to move ahead in the program uh, with the right kind of software that we feel that we're using. Uh, and for the student who's not as advanced, they can take and use as much time as they need 
to master the information. And it's important for students to master the information. Uh, it's important for them to take a class of history if they spend 120 hours and know uh, the things that they're supposed to required by the state and spending 90 hours maybe in a classroom setting and not understanding you know the the materials and such so so it really uh, allows students to be involved that normally would have issues and maybe would become a dropout at right. some particular point right. yep and that program the program that you have allowed us to build does do that that flexibility kind of at your own pace hmm. curriculum for that student. Where do you see virtual learning going in the future? Well, I think there's, there's really no end to it. Mm -hmm. Wherever the internet ends is probably where um, virtual learning will end. Mm -hmm. Because as long as you have access to a curriculum, to an institution that's licensed mm -hmm. uh, as public schools are and, and this type of thing with the state or government agency, there's, there's really no end to it. And even when people finish the traditional high school diploma, the college degree and mm -hmm. such, there's so much available for them to learn beyond what is what we consider academic. Right. You know, right. we, we have uh, lifelong learning. Yes. We learn <clears throat> every day, no matter what age we are, retired, whatever the case happens mm -hmm. to be. And it gives, you know, those people an opportunity too through the internet and it's really virtual learning. They yeah. might not yes. think of it that way. But it is, right. But it is exactly. virtual learning. Yes. Good. Yeah. Um, well, I know from being in my position here and along with the staff and our students that we are very thankful that you started up virtual learning mm -hmm. with Back on Track Education, my virtual academy, because it fits so many students and it's giving them an opportunity that they wouldn't have. So I want to thank you for being here with us. Thank all of you for listening and tuning in to What's Up Wednesday. We will see you next week. Have a fabulous time.